And most of these are, can be used both in childhood and adulthood? Yes. So with, with the TMS, of course, you, the youngest patients are between 12 and 14. Uh, but with TDCS and uh, with the TDCS, you can use it with a much wider population range. And we, so we do have a whole range of technologies that we can employ. There is uh, magnetic stimulation, there is direct current stimulation, and there are other types of stimulation that we can use. Uh, magnetic stimulation is something that's been around a long time, but what has changed is the strength of the magnetic impulse is getting better and better and better. So just like the electric cars, uh, the strength of our magnets that we use to stimulate the brain is getting better and that's making the technology so much better and the impact so much better. Um, with transcranial direct current stimulation, it's really just uh, an anode and a cathode and passing a small current through that. It should not be mistaken for uh, electroconvulsive therapy or shock therapy, it's not. Um, this is really a day procedure, it's a very minor procedure and there are people who even self-administer it to themselves. Um, Transauricular vagus nerve stimulation, which is what we have here uh, today as one of the examples, is where you stimulate the vagus nerve, the branch that comes to the ear. What's unique about the vagus nerve is one of the uh, brain nerves that comes and supplies the internal organs and that's why it's responsible for the gut-brain connection. And it's been worked out that by stimulating the auricular branch of the vagus nerve, you can help people with epilepsy, you can help people with migraine and you can help people with what we call autonomic dysfunction which we've talked about in other discussions of ours. Um, there are other interesting stimulation methods. There is something called deep brain stimulation where a stimulator is implanted in your brain and it's constantly pacing a part of the brain. It's an important treatment for Parkinson's disease um, and extremely useful for people who are not responding to drugs alone. And in the same way, there is now another kind of stimulation that's being used, uh, again, an implanted type of stimulation where a person with difficult to control epilepsy, as the seizure starts spreading, the stimulator comes on and it suppresses the seizure and prevents the seizure from breaking out. So the technologies are, we have a whole host of them, we, they are called the new neurotechnologies and we even now have annual conferences on these new neurotechnologies and it's a rapidly improving and exciting space uh, in neuropsychiatry.